Hello and welcome to the calculator guide video on the FX82 ES Plus Second Edition Beginner's Guide. This is also going to be relevant for if you have the FX85 ES Plus Second Edition and the FX350 ES Plus Second Edition as well. Now I'm not going to cover absolutely every function available on this calculator. This is just a beginner's guide for if you're starting from new and if you are familiar with previous versions of these calculators from Casio you will find this one to be a very similar setup. But I'll take it from the very beginning and run through the key features that you need to know. So obviously once you press the on button from factory settings you should see uh, a cursor displayed and you should have a D and math displayed on the top of your screen there. Now the D indicates that your calculator angle unit is currently in degrees which is going to be relevant for the trigonometric functions. I'll show you how to use those a little bit later. And math indicates the format to which your numbers, particularly fractions and radicals or thirds, are inputted and then displayed as an answer. And we'll have a look at uh, that in just a moment. We'll start off by having a look at mode. So if you just press the mode button, you'll see that we have three modes available to us on this calculator. We have one which is comp, which is computational mode, which is the default mode in which we do most of our calculations. And that is the, the starting mode that we were just in there. We've also got stat or statistics mode, which we will look at briefly later on, and three table mode, which allows us to do tables of functions. So we're just going to remain in comp for now. So press one. And you can see here that we can do basic arithmetic calculations. I'm doing five multiplied by two equals to get your answer. Uh, one thing that I do like about uh, the calculator is, is the clarity of the font and uh, display on the keys here. It's slightly different on the emulator that I have, but I think it's very similar on the actual calculator model. So your answer is displayed here. Now, if you want to use this answer in a second calculation for example if I wanted to add two I can just literally press plus and you can see here that we've got ants which is automatically using the answer from the previous calculation in our next calculation I can press two uh, and then get my answer to that which is going to be 12 if I wanted to use that later on in the calculation uh, say if I wanted to do 60 divided by the answer I could do 60 divided by and then I can use the answer button to include that answer in a subsequent calculation which gives me five. Now let's take a deeper look at how numbers are displayed. So we're currently in math mode Well, we're going to have a look in setup. Now to access this feature or any feature indicated in yellow above each of the primary buttons we need to press the shift button first. So it's shift and then setup and you can see that we've got a range of options. Now option one here is math IO, math input output. And if we have a look in there, you can change the way that your results are formatted. Uh, so our initial or default setting was math output. And let's say we want to do the square root of two. And if we put that in, if we want to navigate so that we're no longer within the square root, we need to use the navigation button to navigate right. You can see that's come out of the square root there. Multiplied by, say, square root of five, for example. Uh, if we press equals then, that gives us the result as a radical or a third, square root 10 by default. Now what we can do is we can press this handy button, S to D, to change that to a decimal approximation. Now let's say you wanted this straight away as your answer rather than the square root answer then if we go to shift and set up and one for math input output and select line output two and let's just do that again square root two right multiplied by square root five press equals you can see straight away there that we've got decimal approximation now incidentally that doesn't work for fractions. With math input, you can see that that's displayed on two layers, which is incredibly useful. Uh, let's say that we've got eight fifths, so it's eight, navigate to the bottom fifths, press equals. You can see that that is still displayed as a fraction. Uh, we need to press SD to give that as a decimal approximation. 
Now what we can do is we can change the way that the fractions are inputted uh, with a line input. So if we go shift and set up and choose two, uh, and now we are in line input and output. You can see that indicated by a zero displayed here, and we no longer have math displayed here at the top. So if I now do eight fifths, you'll notice that the way in which the fraction is displayed has changed. We've got this backwards L shape essentially representing the line of the fraction. And if I press equals here, again, I've still got the fraction in the first instance. Press SD if I want the decimal equivalent uh, of that to be given. I'm just going to switch back to math input and output. So it's shift mode one and one. You need to make a decision depending on the type of math that's covered where you live and the type of qualification that you're studying, whether it's more useful to have, particularly with your radicals or your thirds displayed as a decimal straight away or as a fraction. Don't forget, you can always press SD if you have it as a fraction to get the decimal equivalent. Now let's have a look further in setup, shift and setup. Now you can see that we've got three different angle units that we can choose from here. And I will change those when we have a look at the trigonometric functions. By default, it's in degrees, which tends to be the most common commonly uh, used, but we also have four for radians here and five for the lesser used gradients. Now what we've also got on this page is three different ways that we can display numbers fix uh, means that you have a fixed number of decimal places in your answer. I tend to find that that's not particularly useful generally, but you might want to explore that and see what that's all about. Uh, seven is Psi for science notation, what we call standard form or standard index form here in the UK. And I'll give you an example of how that works. Um, if we select that as the way that we display that, we can also have a selected number of digits here that we can display this as. If I wish to use this, what I tend to do is to select zero, which gives you the full calculated display of significant figures in your answer. But you can fix that so that it will round your answer to a given number of significant figures. So if you choose zero in the first instance, and let's do um, a number, let's say 1,568. We've inputted that as a regular number. If we press equals, you can see that we've got this in science notation here. It's given us a full calculated display of significant figures here. And obviously no, we know that we can cut that off here uh, as these are insignificant zeros. So it's 1.568 times 10 to the three. And let's say we select shift, set up, psi, and let's say we select one significant figure. We can see that that's automatically rounded that to two, two times 10 to the three and so on. So if you're going to use science notation, I tend to find that choosing zero is the best option there but you've got options available if you did want to fix it at a certain number of significant figures the regular display uh, is shift setup norm which is eight and i would choose norm two what happens with norm one is if you have large or more numbers it will default to scientific notation so two tends to be the best one that will give us regular numbers up until i think about times 10 to the nine or the equivalent for the negative as well, I think. And then it'll start to use science notation standard form for uh, very large and very small numbers on there. So go for norm two. That's usually the best option for those. OK, so we briefly use the fraction button there, which is very useful for inputting fractions or divides or setting up two layers uh, to input on the calculator. Again, we use the example of eight fifths and then we can press equals and we can get that as our answer. Remember, we can use SD to change that to the decimal equivalent. But if we have a look here as the shift function, we can actually change that to a mixed number if we so wished. So we can press shift and SD and that will display, rather than an improper fraction, it will display it as a mixed number. Now let's say you wanted to permanently have it, your result as a mixed number rather than an improper fraction. You can press shift, set up, scroll down and you can see option one here means that it will automatically give it as a mixed number straight away so if we've got an improper fraction that we input five over four equals uh, we can see we can give that as a mixed number by default there uh, shift sd to display that again as an improper fraction i tend to prefer to have it as a improper fraction so select two on there d over c uh, which means improper fraction by default. 
you can see that we've got a lot of options for exponents here. We've got default defaults for squared um, on there. We can also do cubed and we've got X to the minus one or the reciprocal function. So we can put 10 to the power minus one that will give us a uh, one tenth as our answer. We can also input any power provided it gives us a result that isn't too large for the calculator to cope with. We've got X to any power here. So that's quite a useful button. Um, but the shortcuts to squared and cubed because they they tend to be the most commonly used. And similar for roots that we've got on here, we've got square roots here. Uh, so we can take the square root of a number. Uh, and if we want the cube root, well, it's just shift and that same button there. So that gives us the cube root of a given number. And we can do a range of different roots as well here. It's actually the shift version of that x to any power we can get any root um, that we want here obviously within reason if it starts to become too complex the calculator might not cope with it so just be careful there now abs stands for absolute we tend to call that the modulus function here in the uk uh, but it's the absolute value function so if you have a negative number so let's say um, we want to find the absolute value of negative eight press equals that will give it as eight and obviously we can have more complex calculations within uh, the absolute value if you press that button first additionally we also have log buttons here uh, so we have a log with any base so let's say we've got log of two log base two of eight equals well that equals three two cubed equals eight so what power do we need to raise two by to get eight it's three so we can use a, a variety of different bases there but we also have standardized logs here we have the common log that will automatically assume a base of 10 so log of 100 close brackets there equals and then we've got two on there and you can see that shift and that same button gives you 10 to the power of so these are inverse features here and uh, the same here we have the natural log ln um, ln 8 for example close brackets parentheses equals um, 2.079 and so on and you can see that we've got the uh, inverse here exponential form we've got e to the power of uh, so these are quite complementary here so that works very well for us so we have three trigonometric functions available here sine cosine and tangent you can see that we've got the inverse available if we press shift sine minus one cosine minus one tan minus one uh, so for example if we wanted to find a uh, sine of 30 degrees sine 30 best practice is to close the brackets or parentheses here press equals and you can see that we've got a value of a half or 0 0.5 there if we have a value in radians let's say three quarters what we need to do is to shift set up and then change the angle unit to four radians you can see now we have an r here at the top rather than a d for degrees uh, and then we can say do the cosine of three shift down here for pi shift and this button for pi you can see it displayed here uh, and then let's say three quarters of pi navigate right here so that you can do a large bracket and you're not on the bottom of the fraction press equals and you can see here that we have uh, exact value negative root 2 over 2 again press SD if you want the decimal equivalent now you may have noticed here that we have a, a negative in a bracket well this is the best button to use if you want to input a negative number now the reason why you can you can use um, the minus sign here the subtract sign but if we already have an answer in we currently have this answer here uh, don't we negative root 2 over 2 let's say we wanted to input negative 8 again for another calculation if I press this button then it will automatically do the answer subtract and then whatever we wanted to do so it'll use the answer from the previous calculation that's not what we want if I put that there that isn't what I wanted I wanted to use uh, negative 8 so if I just start off by pressing this one I can straight away input a negative number negative 8 equals and that will just give me that so it'll stop that chain of using your answer from a previous calculations also this uh, contains a little reminder here that if we're doing the square of a negative number you need to put it in brackets so I'll just show you the difference if I just did negative 8 squared 
and press equal, I would get negative 64. Now that wasn't what I was after, I was after the square of negative eight. What the calculator's done is essentially uh, found the square of this, squared eight, and then took the negative value of it. What I want to do is include a set of brackets or parentheses, open those up, negative eight, close the brackets, and then squared, and then equals, and we get this square of the negative number, which is 64. So just be careful when you do that. And we've also got the fact feature here. So if I wanted to do prime factorization on a number, let's say 360, if I press equals to make that my answer, and then press shift and fact, uh, then I have that displayed as uh, in prime factorization form, a product of its prime factors there. And this weird looking button here uh, with the degrees and different sort of apostrophe looking things, uh, that is the degrees, minutes and seconds button. That's very useful for time. So I wanted to change 2.5 hours to say hours, minutes and seconds. 2.5, make it the answer. It's five over two, but if I press this button here, uh, that displays that as two hours, 30 minutes. So that's very useful. And it's also useful if I want to find out uh, minutes as a fraction of an hour. So I could say no hours, 42 minutes. Press equals make that my answer and press SD. Uh, well, I'll get seven tenths, which means it's 42 minutes is seven tenths of an hour. So I can convert from minutes to hours there, which is quite useful if you're doing calculations such as speed and time. There is a video available on using this feature a little bit more if you want to find out more about it. Here on the left hand side, we have the store and recall feature, which is very useful if we want to save values to then use in subsequent calculations. So let's say uh, I have a value, let's say 456. If I then want to store that in the memory, I need to press shift and store. And you notice that there is an STO up here indicating that the store has been activated. Now we have different letters representing the different memories that we can store. Uh, so we've got 8F here, you can see that in the red font. We have X and Y, and then we have M, which is the independent memory, which we can uh, add values to and subtract values from. I don't tend to use this, but this is, can be popular, I think, previously with um, accountants and such for adding figures as you go along. I tend to use the other values here, particularly X and Y. I'm gonna store this in A, so all you need to just press is you just need to press the button, and notice how that, that has then stored that into memory A. 456. If I want to recall it, I'll just clear this off by pressing AC. Uh, then I want to recall its recall, and then I just go for A, and that'll bring the value up. If I want to use it in a calculation, let's say I want to do 52 plus, and then I want to add that value 456. What I want to do is access those red functions by pressing alpha, alpha, A, equals and then that's used the stored value in a calculation. ENG here it refers to engineering notation I'm not going to cover that here but we will have a look at the percentage button here which we can do for working out percentage of values or expressing an amount as a percentage of another so for example if I wanted to find 28% of 928 shift percent times 900 equals and here I have the result 252 or well, let's say I wanted to express 5 as a percentage of 40 it's 5 fraction button 40 and then you have the percentage on the bottom like so equals I'll just press SD on that so we can have it as a decimal 12.5 uh, so 5 is 12.5 percent of 40. If you input a number and you make a, a mistake and you want to correct it you can just press delete which acts like a backspace if you have a particularly long calculation and you need to add something you can use insert as well by pressing shift on that ac does clear your screen on there i'll go over clear at the end um, then we've got here npr and ncr they work out combinations and permutations so so let's say we've got three colors, blue, yellow, and red. How many combinations of two colors could I make out of those three colors? Three, NCR, two. I've got three different pairs, blue and yellow, yellow and red, 
and red and blue. Um, now, if the order matters, then it's a permutation. So three, shift, permutations, and then two, and that gives you six because you can have red and blue and they can have blue then red and so on. Uh, so that gives you six different permutations. I won't cover Paul and Rec here and I won't speak too much about these ones here just to let you know about random integer. So alpha and then the point here. Uh, so you could use random integer and let's say you wanted a number between 100 and 200, 100 and then you can see that there's a little comma here that we can use to separate those out so shift that and then 200 close your brackets or parentheses and if you just keep pressing equals this will then generate random numbers between 100 and 200 for you we've already discussed that there's the pi there if you want pi for any calculations and there's also a singular e as well if you press alpha and here we have a shortcut to science notation or standard index form so for example i could in input 2 times 10 to that and then you just press your power or your exponent here so it's 2 times 10 to the power of 3 equals 2000 so that's a shortcut that you can use as well as shift and uh, this button here to get to 10 to the power of and again we've got a DRG here that I won't cover in this video let's take a look briefly at the other two modes so if you remember at the beginning we had a look at three modes that were available so if I press mode here let's have a look at two stat and we've got a variety of different relationships between variables that we can choose we're just going to focus on one var which is one variable now we've got a small data set here so I'm going to start with the first value, 5, press equals, and you can see that that is then populating the X column for our variables, 2 and 9. So once you've inputted uh, your variables in there, what you need to do counterintuitively is just press AC once. You'll be in stat mode, that's automatically by default in line input output and then you can access some options to do with those data by pressing shift and one you can see stat here and there's various different options that we can have let's just focus on four for var and you can see here that we have n for the number of values we've got two for the mean let's take a look at that x bar is the mean so the mean of our values was 7.2 and if we go back again and have a look stat var We've also got a standard deviation and a sample standard deviation available there as well. And there's a few other features, uh, so I'll leave you to have a look at those. Uh, the third mode that we have in there is also table mode. So I'm going to press uh, AC and then mode, uh, and then we'll select three for table. Now here you've got FX, so you're prompted to input a function of x in there so let's just have a look at uh, this function that we've got y equals 2x plus 1 what we're going to do is generate a table of values so we will input a start and end value for which the calculator will input values of x and then they will produce values for fx or y uh, automatically for us so let's input our function to want to access x so it's alpha x plus 1 equals now start is the lowest value that we want uh, our x to b to input it let's go for negative 10 to 10 you don't want to make this too large the calculator only has memory to do so much and then the step is basically the increment how much it goes up each time uh, so let's stick to uh, integers so that's step of one so we'll increase by one each time press equals and here you can see that we've got a range of the x values and the corresponding fx values representing coordinates on a graph for this particular function uh, and you can see there that we've got x from negative 10 to 10 and the corresponding y values in the fx column there and there's lots of different functions that you can explore using table mode you can explore and discover the behavior of the functions when you've got a variety of different x values without having to input them individually as you would in computation mode. A couple of things to show you last, I'm just going to return to mode one, computation. Uh, just take a look, we're still in radians at the moment, which if you remember wasn't the default angle unit. I'm just going to do a reset procedure. So if you ever get into too much trouble or are confused about uh, where you are, it's a good idea to reset to the default settings so to follow that it's shift 
which is how uh, a little s is um, displayed here whenever you activate shift and then it's clear here so it's nine for clear you can choose to alter your setup uh, so your your number format and and things like that uh, you can clear out your memory or you can do both of them here all features is three so three equals to confirm you want to reset all and then finally ac does it reset notice how we're back to where we started from there and then finally if you're all done it's shift and ac to switch the calculator off so yours should go off there obviously i'm using the emulator here so it will not display so why not explore some of the features that are available there we haven't covered everything there's a few more features as well in the setup as well that we haven't had opportunity to have a look at here as well as some on the calculator but that is certainly enough to get you started if you're new to these models of calculator. Don't forget to like and subscribe for future videos, but that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching and I shall see you next time on The Calculator Guide.